Is there not? I forget what the, the cooldown for the unstable current is. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe there is no cooldown for it. That's kind of ridiculous. So that, that'll keep stacking. The, they'll stack up the Viscous Nezugun every time he's going to get purged. That yeah. seems a little absurd. How are you supposed to kill a Razor in that, in that situation? You just have to Lord. run with him and, and spam your quills. Yeah, you okay. Really, unless you have a BKB, which he probably will want to go for this game. In fact, it's going to be paramount that he goes for it because there's a Hex from the Lion, there's stuns and whatnot, there's the Clockwork Hook, so he's going to really want to... I don't want to say rush a BKB, but he's going to need to get it after his first item. So maybe he goes Vanguard BKB, or maybe Vanguard SMY BKB, something like that. We'll see. Which what actually shouldn't be too bad because he's playing as a one position Bristol back, so it's yeah. not like his farm is going to be too totally bad. stifled. And if they can stack Ancients too from the Batrider, like if they stack the jungle. F wait. Oh, they're, oh, that's the one problem they have here with Secret, which is still okay, but if Batrider gets shut down in lane, then it's going to be hard for him to kind of rotate and take jungle stacks because that will be occupied by the Enigma. Look at this kind of cheeky play coming out from Ake. Sits on the top of the cliff, he'll tether down when he's ready to, and if Zai tries to contest this rune, he'll probably just end up dying. And maybe they, they, they want to have the a, a chance begins. to see if Zai is looking for a Firefly opportunity trying to go for it, but no. Tethers down, actually gets the bounty rune no problem whatsoever. S4 also takes the, the bounty rune top, so the Swede versus his old squad. This is the interesting matchup, and it is going to be S4 mid, by the way. This is something I mentioned in the draft. Um, and when Arteezy played against this combo earlier on in the tournament, he had a fantastic time. But for S4, th this is... Uh, there's some legends, Loda and Ake together. This is not going to be an easy time for this Bristol back, especially if they are super aggressive early on. Yeah, and that's the important thing, is, is to be super aggressive early on, because if he hits level 3, 4, and if you go on him when you already have like one or two stacks of that quill, uh, the quill spray on you, you could die, and you yeah. it might not kill the Bristol back. So level one from the get-go, they need to auto attack him, do whatever they can. Yeah, exactly. This is now it might not seem like it's doing a whole lot, and it might seem like a waste of mana, but this is how you have to win it lane. Uh, so if they keep the aggression up. They need to get mana onto Loda, and it, right here, if you see Loda's build, he's got four iron branches. Obviously, he's going to sell one of them later because three, only three of them go into the magic wand. But he needs the 240 mana at level two right. to actually combo up with a spell. So, which is why we see circles from time to time uh, on Tiny. It's just to get that mana. It's something I forget about all the time when I'm playing here. I'm like, oh, I just don't have the mana to do the combo. That's nice. But and also another thing you pointed out is that I mean, it's just I mean, S4 only has one pool of tango and a salve. I mean, like he can't tango up right now because it's on cooldown. So how is he going to regen? Is he going to pop his salve when he's at half health? He doesn't want to do that. They, they might even just like think about diving the tower once they get their abilities back off cooldown. But they've done a very nice job so far of making sure S4 has not really been a problem. And they've also well, gotten a lot of last hits in the process. But so is S4, though. So he's, he's actually going to pop his salve now. Oh, they cancel it with the toss. Oh, no. nice, nice play by Loda there. But he's actually really close to his bottle. If he gets the CS, he's going to get this one, I think. Nope, he missed it. Oh, he got it with oh, the, the spray. cool spray last hit. He's got his bottle now. So that this, is not easy, by the way. This is a very good start here for Bristleback, actually. I mean, it, it's, there's only so much you can do to zone out of Bristleback. He's just a very tanky hero. So this is a very, in, in general, this is just a smart decision from Secret to send him mid over the Shadowfiend. Like I said, I, I, I didn't think about it. I should have, but Arteezy mid with the Shadowfiend, he could have easily got shut, shut down. So good, good, uh, good decision here from Secret. Contest the top rune. Ake's gonna grab the DD. Puppy, he probably shouldn't go toe to toe with an Iowa, although the base damage isn't that high. Still does a chunk of damage to Puppy. The Enigma is gonna have to saunter <laughs> his way back in, and he actually, he's got a little bit of a stack here. He's gonna make some Eidolons. Mud Golems, the stupidest looking uh, creatures in the game. Not to say that they're poorly designed, but they're just a funny, they're a funny set of guys. And 12 last hits for Arteezy in the top lane. So he's doing well. Again, they're giving him safe lane farm. Not prioritizing getting a bottle. S4, middle lane, toss is gonna go. Quill sprays are up. No mana for the avalanche. And now S4 with level two bristleback. This is gonna be where it gets difficult. Now he can start taking over the lane, and this is why this hero is so good. Uh, so very good against these two heroes in the middle lane from Alliance. They might even want to have a uh, mad rotate. I'm not even kidding. Like, he will be a problem if they don't address him and get kills onto him. Um, he's, he's even going to be a problem even if they do get kills onto him, so they need to... I think they need to kill him. I think that maybe Matt needs to rotate. Um, maybe once he gets his boots, he's about 50 gold away from that, so maybe a couple last hits here after he pulls this. He can rotate. Uh, we'll see, though. I mean, Loda and 
And Ake are getting up levels, though just up to level 4 now. So if they combo, which... Oh, he misses the top, unfortunately. Dwindling down just a little bit, but he still has bottles, so he's very healthy. Loda getting overcharged, so making sure he's a bit more tanky, but still has four full spray stacks. They're gonna go for the kill, the toss is gonna go. He didn't use the avalanche, it's on cooldown for another two seconds. S4, not getting body blocked. There's the avalanche. They might get the first blood here, and they will. It does get split up, but still a very solid kill. One that I was not expecting, but that overcharge paying for itself. It's just level one, but it's enough to help them out and secure it. Just, it's really good persistence. A lot of teams and players could get frustrated that they can't get the kill. Um, you have to really go that extra mile to get the kill on Bristle back because you kind of have to, like, he saw Loda. He's trying to attack but also move forward so he can attack him from the front. So, like, like I said, it can be very frustrating, so it's very important that they got that kill. I think Ayo uh, took a quick trip back home, although he did have money. I'm not sure if that was intentional. I didn't see it actually happen. But Zai, mad, going toe to toe. Zai has Firefly. There's the Hex. Static Link's gonna go. He can Firefly, but he's already on the high ground here. He's gonna go down to the plasma field. That's a big kill. And Zai actually going down to the line. Meanwhile, mid lane toss again. The close sprays are up. S4 doesn't have the nasal goo. They will use the overcharge, and the spirit spalls are not gonna allow S4 to go any further in trying to chase down Loda. Picked and banned at 70% of, now he's only picked and banned 20% of pro drafts. Which is a little bit interesting Heads to me. I still down. think the hero is very, very strong. Obviously there were some significant nerfs to him, but I think it's a situational pick now. Like for example, this game. It's, it's an amazing hero, this game. Yeah, I mean, and we see it against Troll as well. Like just being able to sap his damage. So effective against Shadow Fiend, very effective against S4, very effective. We already talked about it, the unstable current. Top lane, Telekinesis, Nico went with the body block, but Groki does get cogged out. There's gonna be the use of the raise, and they get the double raise. Arteezy gets the kill. So good with those raises. And in talking with people like Rotterdam last night, saying that Arteezy was one of the, if not the highest mechanical skill player in the game. Down bottom. Zai is going to firefly down the cliff, 500 gold in the bank. That kill did really hurt him, I think. He was actually CSing very well, but the kill puts him back a little bit. Yeah, he, he's actually CSing very well. Uh, 20 CS for him. That's very, very good, obviously. He's up against a pseudo dual lane. I think I think Mad's been doing a lot of pulling. I actually, I, has he just not been harassing, maybe been focusing on pulse? Only or something, but yeah. The, the, the like time, the one time they got the kill was the time where Matt actually tried to rotate over as I was going up the high ground instead of fire flying to, let's say, the Roche pit or over the trees. And in, in this general area, he kind of just went up instead. And now yeah. they're looking for that kill again, but now that, that, that's not gonna work this time around. He's too far away, and they, they don't have any way to lock him down. Yeah, I, I do find that surprising because uh, ICS is, is so high. I think it should be a lot lower. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see what point Pike puts his next point into. Okay, he's going to go back to the plasma field. I thought he was going to leave it at one and just put points into both the static tank and the unstable current, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Here comes Matt. He's trying to get some kind of sun initiation onto the bat since it is nighttime for a, a minute and a half more. But uh, side playing a little bit more conservatively now. And he's up to level six with Tranquil, so Maverick is doing a very good job down here. Mid lane, Denied. S4, there's a lot of heroes nearby. Kuroki, as well as Puppy, was looking for a rotation and looking for a gank. Loda was alone. Uh, Ake has gone back to the the fountain just to get mana for his bottle, and now he's got a TP in as well, and he'll blow it in the process. Uh, and make sure he can s continue to CS. The problem is that he's at 37 CS, and there's 50 for Arteezy and 58. Hold that thought as S4. No, they're not going to keep going. Not sure if they saw Kuroki. It is nighttime, I believe. So they, they don't have any high ground vision here. Toss goes. And S4 continues his uh, CSing. And he's up to 34. So he's actually only five behind this dual lane. Do you think this dual lane is accomplishing enough here for Alliance? I think they're accomplishing what they can. I don't think that they're playing it wrongly at all. I think they're playing it how they can because the nature of the matchup yes. uh, against a Bristleback. They even killed them once, which is great. I don't I think they're even lucky in getting that one. But, uh, like I said, I, I, I wish that maybe the line would have rotated and secured Radiant's a kill. Top Solo tower smoke is or under something. Attack. 
But uh, this crystal back, like I said, even with a kill onto him, is still going to get someone out of hand. Oh, Loda in Loda. trouble. They're going to lift him. Enigma. Yeah, Puppy's like, I can use a black hole if I need to, and he, he's probably about to. He will. He catches Loda just on the edge. The tether's going to come through, but that, that doesn't help. Ake has to leave now. S4, no nasal goo, no tether as well. He'll buy a TP scroll, but he's done. Dunzo with Dunzo. Mad misses. He whips on the earth spike. Mad does have the hex, but I don't think he cares. And Arteezy gets a kill on Black Hat Bottom. Mad does TP away. But uh, that, that was not a great set of events for, for Alliance there. Yeah, and then unfortunately has to use the TP back as well. So now he doesn't have that available. That means mid tower is probably going to... Uh, I don't know if it's going to die, but they're going to get some good damage onto it. The, the kill on to Pycat as he was diving. Got the kill on the bat, but nice rotation here from Arteezy. And does he have oh, any other Oh, the long range toss from Mad, and then the follow up toss avalanche combo coming in. Wow, that was pretty sick. He tossed it across the river. Matt says, How you doing? Let me just I'll spike Spikey and Hexer real quick. That was, that was something else. The poor man's blink dagger, right? Yep. Every time. It's, it's like, it's a common. Uh, initiation from any tiny, but it's so impressive to see, especially when it's super long range. Really fun stuff. Yep, so it's actually gonna be, I think, a drums here for Arteezy, if I saw that right. Yeah. So Tread's, Tread's drums here for the Shadow Fiend, something you don't see every day. Now, I mean, is the build super different between the lanes? Do you go for that Yule still, or do you pick up another item if you're Arteezy in this situation? I don't think Yule's is that good this game, because. One, it's just gonna, it's not really gonna do anything against the Clockwork. You're just gonna use yourself and come right back down in the Battery Assault. Force is better against Clockwork than Yules. Um, it's Radiance not, Middle Tower is under it's not attack. gonna stop a Tiny Wisp from tracking you down. It's horrible against the Razor. Radiance uh, because middle you can't actually combo yourself onto the Razor. Oh, there's a hook onto RTZ. Oh my god, Quirky with the instant telekinesis. Toss out on S4. Look how little damage he takes, and he was facing them actually uh, during Dyer's that combo. And he's going to continue to run at Ake, who has Tether up in six. He can probably relocate out, but yeah, he is going to relocate out. He'll make it away. He'll try to get into a position to fight with Zai, is actually harassing him. Now he even gets a last, so they might even get two out of this. If they had just run away, I think maybe they survived. He actually, he was waiting, I think, for a center, and he's going to try to put it in equal, but he gets telekinesis so fast that he gets blown up. It was a good try. Zai actually avoids the avalanche as well. So two quick kills from Secret. They do rotate all five heroes over, and Pycat is still farming, which is nice for them, but uh, and, uh, another two heroes that, I guess it's the support. It's not the worst thing in the world for Alliance. Dude, those Wisp Balls did so much damage. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, they, they, really they don't did. feel great. But... Yeah, I don't. How did? Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that the lion died too. That wasn't even a blink dagger up onto the bat rider. So, Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Very good attack. start yet again for Team Secret. But yeah, to build on the Yule's point, it's like it, it's bad against Razor because you can't even blink after your Yule's to get into position because it does the damage to you. Mm. And then even if you Radiance don't have blink and try to walk up after Yule's, oh, here comes a hook. It actually misses and hits on the creeps. Can he get into range? There's a drum charge that might actually get him into the range for battery assault, and it does. No TP's either to help him out. They, they realize our team's dead. He overextended going for that tower, and he'll fall. And he also picks up a Morbid Mask. Um, maybe a Helm of the Dominator, which is the most common item, I believe, on, on Shadow Fiends. At least one that go comes from a Morbid Mask. So, an interesting choice. But yeah, again, he was just too close to that tier 1. They easy hook shot that does miss. So, he'll fall. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a Mask of Madness into, the, into a BKB. Just because the Mask of Madness will give him more movement speed to run around and kite the Wisp Tiny, and also kite the static link from the Razor. Now, that's not to say that he he, he can't go the, uh, the Helm of the Dominator, but I know RTZ style, I know his kind of mode of thinking a little bit, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Mask of Madness in the DKB, but we'll see if he goes something a little more attack. safe. Radiant's Conversely, if he gets caught out with his Mask of Madness turned on, I mean, he's, he's dead as all hell, True. but I guess you could say the same True. thing about him getting caught out in general. But they want to, they, they're the ones that want to put the pressure on because they have Zai getting his Blink Dagger right now. He actually has the money for it. S4 is Radiant's still probably going for that Vanguard. I don't think he has it. There's nothing on the courier. Dyer's so Treads Vanguard probably into the attack. BKB, which you talked about, which is huge this game. The Blink Lasso now becoming uh, a big factor. But again, we talk about uh, Bat Rider so often that Force Staff is actually the biggest item, I think, after the Blink Dagger. Getting that Force to pull whatever hero you get back and, and kind of keep yourself safe. Attack. 
What is Lloyd looking Dyer's like right now? Let's check. Is under attack. Really Radiant's rushing that Ags. Not going for fallen. drums. He has the, the, the treads then into the Ags immediately, which I guess isn't super uncommon, but surprising to me. Ooh, we got toss on Kuroki. We could do a toss black hole combination. That seems ridiculous. <laughs> but if any team can do it, I think it, it'd probably be secret. First, however, they say, listen, there's fighting to be had, but Roshan, and that's our biggest objective. With Viscus Nizku, presence in the Dark Lord, Roshan, and the Eidolons, uh, this is going to fall pretty quickly. And we see the, the good old trade the Tier 1 tower for Rosh. Guess who ends up winning on this one? Dyer's top tower has fallen. It's actually going a little bit slower than one would expect. Uh, Roshan has Shun. fallen to the dark. Yeah, okay, so they finally get it. And the Aegis goes, of course, to Arteezy. You see Zai is trying to ping someone out. He's looking for Loda, who does have his axe and about 500 gold. They're going to stack this camp and he'll be about 300 away from it. So that's obviously very good for him. I would love to see a toss black hole, by the way. It's kind of hard for, to expect one of those things, and that's the beauty of Rubik in general. Like, you don't, yeah. you know he has the ability, you know it's there in the back of your mind, but you're never really fully expecting it. It's only like when you, when they're in the middle of a team fight and they steal like the black hole, they steal the Ravage or something, is when, when it's at the forefront. But right. we'll keep our eye on Kuroki. By the way, something we haven't talked about is the relocate away from uh, a Batrider Lasso. Right. Something to keep in mind. That actually is a very good defensive uh, capability. So they, they don't they don't really have the unstable current for the Razor. They also have that relocate out in the immediate hex. So Zai is going to have a tough time this game. Hookshot and Dartezi relocated as well. He's kind of alone. Or his spike's going to go. Do they have finger? Absolutely. Will they need it? Absolutely not. Arteezy going to fall, but that is just the Aegis. But there's only Zai here, and there's four heroes in the backside. They grab Mad. Relocate could go. No, it's already been used. They relocate out. Mad will go down. Zai continue to chase after Loda. Flame Break is available. Can he cancel the TP? Absolutely. There is follow-up coming. He dodges the avalanche. The right click from Arteezy. That, that age is proving very useful. There's going to be the Midnight Pulse toss onto Puppy. I mean, that's that's what we're looking for, but we're looking for the toss onto, like, five heroes, not just the one. Radiance There's no way he's using the Black Hole in that situation. Static link onto S4, so he's going to lose Radiance all of his damage, but Puppy comes fallen. in looking for him out, just can't find it. Kroki's a bit too late to the party, actually cancels his TP, or gets canceled, and... He decides Dyer's to back away and head down to the river and attack. look for the top rune spot at 16 Radiant's minutes, more top than likely. Tower is under attack. Yeah, he's going to lose the toss in a few seconds here, unfortunately. But All you right. see right there, the one viscous nasal goo was applied to Razor, and he just can't chase him anymore. That's just a level 2 unstable current, too. So the um, the slow duration is going to last of actually doubled. So one second right now will be two seconds when it's maxed. So one thing to be careful of, but... It was really unfortunate that Tiny died because he was so close to his axe. He was like killing creeps to try to get enough gold to buy out, but I think he had some of my reliable gold Dyer's as well. Dyer's so middle tower is much, under attack. See, it is going to stifle. It's not going to be the most impressive axe uh, rush timing, but it's uh, it could be worse. No, certainly, and I think as long as they can survive the onslaught that is Ar Arteezy's Shadow Fiend progression, they could still have a very good time late game. We're talking about a Tiny Io combo. We're talking about a combo that has ratted, uh, clawed, and fought their way to victory numerous times. Well, that's just gonna go. Look at that purge on the side. It does go away. They're gonna mount this, and Pycat is pretty quick. He has phase drum. And Fable's gonna go. Midnight Pulse is doing a lot of damage. Pycat does have it fall. They have to work very hard for the kill, though. But it's a big, big, big bounty. Blink forward. Zai still looking for more. Flame breaks on cooldown for five. Mad. He's like, please don't kill me. I'm just a lion. I might be an ugly mother, but uh, at least I, I will get away. Radiance yeah, bottom he, tower he definitely lived a long attack. time there. He purged them all as well, but again, it's only a level two purge. And, uh, Radiance structures last that are long. fortified. So it's kind of unfortunate. Dyer's With top tiny tower up is the under lane, attack. Radiance the bottom tower back, gonna get is under by attack. The, the avalanche there of Tiny. And here comes a relocate. The hook, unfortunately, misses. Now load up. Ooh, big telekinesis finger on Arteezy. He doesn't get the Requiem off. Toss is going to get the kill. And Loda, realizing that they had S4 TP top, they just 
They know that secret stay too long. Lasso Zai doesn't have it. Toss that lunch combo is going to go again. He's going to get hexed up. Secret, they're kind of throwing this uh, advantage away. Plastic Kill is going to go. Kroki tosses Bane Bolt. He's going to get two. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Toss back onto Kuroki. They're throwing Toss tennis balls at this point. He's going to try to TP away. He might make it and will. Kuroki actually being just the most amazing player on this Rubik. That's absolutely incredible. Oh my god. We need a replay of that because that was that was an insane play. That was pretty pretty effective. All right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I need, I need right, to on it. That was something else. Kuroki. We don't expect those plays to be made, but he makes them so often on the Rubik. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, he's a pretty good Rubik player. I think we're good. We're gonna send it over to Pimp real quick. Let's see that one more time, man. Rock it on! Oh, that again, something no, else. I was muted the whole time. I'm sorry, guys. Well, rip. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you saw it. It's fine. Hashtag five. A long pause coming through. Sai now the last hole up on the load up. Now this is gonna go for black hole on the load. Cancelled immediately. He got the avalanche off. Oh, that black hole is not what he wanted. Lotus still might fall. Midnight pulse. The right click should be enough. To secure the kill. That. That black hole kept them in place long enough for them to actually jump in, get all five heroes nearby, and they get the big target, they get the big tiny with the big tree in his hand. And he was building towards that assault cross. His progression now stops. They'll go for the tier two. Radiance middle tower yeah. is under and, attack. Uh, yeah, the clockwork, like, this is kind of what I talked about, how like his initiations, he's starting the fights, like he's getting the ball rolling, but he's not actually holding anyone in place immediately. It's a little bit different than what I see. Radiance middle for instance, tower like a legion commander fallen. picked up for it. It, it instantly keeps them in place. They can't run away and buy time for the team to get there and things like that. Um, so I'm, I'm just not convinced the clockwork is oh, doing yeah. enough. He, he also had a very rough start in the laning phase. Sun coming out from Mad, unfortunately misses on the Bristleback, but he's just trying to do whatever he can to stop this push. He's relatively close to his blink. He's about to go. Oh, Pycat, top lane. Yeah, they might be able to chase after him. They have Lasso in five, but he'll turn tail and run. His SNY now completed. And this guy was already fast with face rum. Now he's going to have an SNY as well. That seems uh, a little ridiculous to try to catch somebody who also has unstable current. Important to note, S4 was trying to push into the tier 3 tower. Did get a bit of damage. We've talked about the counter with the mana drain because you need to use those spells. We're going to find Ake okay, get blown up. Barely got enough time to spin my map over and actually see what was happening. First spike again with from Mad. Not his day with these ground targets. I mean, that one was kind of hard though because he was hasted and... You yep. can't use your hex on a haste guy because they'll just still run away. So, yep. but yeah, it, it hasn't been the easiest game or best game from him. But um, I, mean, it's fun. I, I still really like Alliance's draft, except I'm not the biggest fan of the Clockwork pick. I just don't know that he can, even if he goes and someone can actually do anything on his own. Like he's gonna he's gonna be sacrificing his life and trying to just get Secret into a bad Radiant's position. Radiant's bottom but, tower is under uh, attack. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. pycat has got a Saint Nyasha now, so he's running at nearly haste movement speed. Radiant's bottom tower has boost. fallen. Uh, but he's Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I think. There's that lasso coming out on Mad. This guy says, please, no. He goes down. Earth Spikes picked up for Kuroki. They're pushing across mid. Alliance, uh, they'll get the tier. They're going to glyph it, actually. s going to TP back home. Avalanche is going to go. He'll clear this up. And is it in deny range? By one HP, it is in deny range. That's something else, and they'll be able to take this down and that farm. They needed that farm. They are really just choking out Alliance at this point. They've put a lot of pressure on the enemy jungle, so Alliance have to find other places to farm. And that's how they're going to win this game is by being aggressive, making sure they get across the map, get farm for loaded specifically, and take fights that are on their terms, which is tough because you have a lasso, you have to deal with the black hole, you have to deal with the mech. 
The Secret have such an advantage, and now they have a Blink Dagger on Kuroki as well, which is before Mad Hass is, and he's the one with the Earth Spike. <laughs> Kuroki's is just stolen. Yeah, this this game and this this whole series has shown you how adamant the Secret is about taking things slowly and being patient, and like that a lot of teams could just get hasty there and just push, push, and like oh it's just a middle tier one tower we can get bottom racks, but. Like, still, as more TP's in, tries to stifle their push a little bit. Really want to just take this slow and patiently until the best possible time to let go high ground, which, according Radiant to them, right, is right now. Are fortified. We'll see if they actually continue Radiant's to mount tower this pressure. The tier one tower gets Dyer's flipped up, high cap runs forward, hookshot's gonna go, it's gonna miss it, hits the frost mage, it hits the ogre frost mage, or Teezy's ogre frost mage. They get the last one to mad, they've killed Nikwa already. They have buyback in the clock, which they might have to use it. The rack coming out from both Ake and Loda. They know they can't defend this rack, so it looks like they might come back in eventually. They'll try to trade. Is there a cliff coming out from Secret? Absolutely. They'll TP on top lane. Loda, are they going to relocate him out? They're looking for him. Earth Spike blink onto Ake. Will he get out in time? The black hole onto two. This might be game ending. The flame break. Ake still alive. Finally goes down. Loda left to his own devices. He can try to TP, but he's so low. 172 HP. Meanwhile, at bottom lane, Lebraxes are already gone. Fade Bolt, Loda, ring around the rose of the tree, keeping him alive. He will end up falling with no buyback. S4 gets the tier 3 tower mid and Secret about to take this series. 2-0 it looks like, or at least two sets of Raxes, maybe not. Pycat running in, they finger off S4. Pycat does get Requiems, Artis is going to try to keep you away, it looks like, no, the hook shot comes in. It was just up for Niqua, just respawning, just coming off the cooldown, Artis goes down. He buys a full Shadow Blade before he dies, they don't get both set of Rax, I spoke too soon. And actually, Alliance they hold, despite losing a lot of heroes in the process. This is pretty big damage, though, and they, they didn't do enough to the top tower to really make it worth it at all. And as you mentioned, oh, okay, Lion did pick up his blink, so I guess that's good for him. And it's up! But uh, AC is almost on the way for Tiny. He needs about 700. Hi, Cat. He's being last up, but he's, oh, he barely gets enough movement speed to put him up on the ledge right there. He has a TP. He actually, Flame Break's gonna go. It's gonna, not gonna push him off the cliff either. And it looks like Pi Cat's in trouble to toss back, though. But it's on to Kuroki, and Kuroki takes the kill easily. Who, by the way, still toss again. Puppy doesn't have holes, so they actually just have to relocate out. And uh, they will back up. There's no way they are fighting this. The Wisp will come back. Maybe they can get a tether target and might be mad. Or it could be just something in the lane. Or no, they they actually relocated in. I'm sorry. I thought they relocated out. So Aki is actually fine. He's he's safe. He's safe and sound back home. They were trying to save their buddy Razor. It was a nice idea by Loda by trying to toss him over that ledge onto a hero. Uh, but he just took too much damage and it was just too late. So here comes oh, Niqua. Oh, he sees all the high ground. He's in some trouble. Radiant's Very tanky though. Yeah, Bloodstone, 13 charges. He has the mech as well. Blackpool's still not there. Toss Ava could do enough and will. That's down now. S4 being mana drained. Getting kind of low in that mana pool, but still enough to fight. Look at the damage with the DD onto Mad. His eyes should get the skill of great Yules up onto Loda. He won't go anywhere. Toss further. Trying to get them out. Okay, trying to relocate up in six. Not there. Do they have any way to cancel the TP? No. Meanwhile, mid lane, they find Nico and pop the flame out for only a moment longer before he does go down. Tiny does buy the Assault Turos. That might be enough. Hookshot comes through, I think. No, it's actually the last one to Pycat, bringing you back. The right click from Arteezy. And that is GG Alliance going down 0 oh 2. They fought their best. They go for the Vistage combo in the first game. They go for the Tiny Io combo in the second game. But Secret pick the heroes they're comfortable with. And boy, did they play well. Yeah, they really did. I think that this is the expected result out of this. I think Alliance are still, um, you know, obviously. Uh, can't lie, they're still struggling, and they're still trying to find their feet. I did like the second draft a little bit more. I, I just, I, the only thing I wasn't a fan of was this clockwork pick. It's because if you look at the lineups of Team Secret, I, I just don't think. It, obviously, you're more of a team player on the clockwork, and you.